All right, time for shenanigans, spiky shenanigans. You may have seen my video about claws, arm blades, spiked shields, etc. If you haven't, you're doing yourself a great disservice. Actually, you're just doing me a disservice. Who cares about that, right? But it is linked down below if you're interested. So I talked about pros and cons and several observations and everything, but talk is cheap. What's better, trying it out yourself. So I got myself a pair of these from Mac Armor. This design is quite unique. As far as I'm aware, there is only one depiction of this in particular. So that medieval illustration is showing a strapped arm shield that terminates in a metal spike, probably steel. And this is shown in a dueling context, judicial dueling. That's where they usually come up with specialized designs that you don't otherwise see. It seems like quite a good idea. So you've got something that covers your entire arm. I mean, almost, not the upper arm, but that covers your lower arm very well. That will protect you better than just armor and that you can even attack with in the form of the spike. And because I'm sure it'll come up, would this allow you to dual wield swords with more protection? This particular one, uh, not really. I mean, you can, but it is very awkward because this is a solid handle. So the sword is stuck in this position. Basically the stiffest hammer grip you can imagine. You can't even tilt your wrist forward. This is the position that it's stuck in. So uh, you can like thrust from the side or from below. And yeah, that's about it. You can perform an extremely stiff uh, short distance slash. And that's about it. This is not really a good idea. Uh, however, if this was a strap instead of a solid grip, then you would be better able to hold on to something. The downside is then it wouldn't be as secure anymore in your hand. This way, because this is solid, it's not going to flop around. You can sort of use a two-handed sword like this if you don't hold it like this, but rather in front of the grip, which is pretty weak. You know, like this becomes so bulky that you can't fully wrap your fingers around. But if it's just as a supporting hand and assuming that you're not actually uh, powering the cut with your left hand, which some people argue you should, but you could still perform a push-pull cut with some difficulty. It's a bit awkward. I really wouldn't recommend that personally, but in theory, you could, I suppose. So let's take a look at the practical tests where we tried out how these work. What saved me here was the point of the shield. It deflected a thrust enough to go past my neck. Here my shield turned a strike that might gut someone into a pretty harmless tip slice.
blade bounced off my shield and ended up on my neck. And there, a slice is bad news for me. Again, caught the blade on the point of the shield. Yeah, protecting your legs is not easy with these. This, by the way, is what it looks like when you fight an experienced instructor on a higher skill level. You try really hard to not get your ass kicked too much. That's the best I can hope for. Here should have turned my body into it to displace the cut further off to the side. What I ended up doing was basically just help drive it into my arm. Yay. The shield worked perfectly here. With just the sword, this would have been a double hit. This is a good example of how important it is to keep movements tight. You don't have any time to waste. And here we've got a good example of what that extra guard on a messer is for. 
All right, so my impression of these so far is quite positive. I think they're pretty awesome, actually. Um, sure, they don't provide as much cover as a larger shield, which is also why they wouldn't be battlefield suitable, because when there are projectiles flying around, you know, be it arrows or thrown javelins or axes or maybe even pommels. You need a little bit more to cover yourself with. This is just not enough. However, for a you know, dueling and civilian self-defense purpose, these are great. I mean, they're a little bit bulkier than a buckler, depending on the size. There are bucklers which are really not much larger in diameter than the width here, so you could get away with something smaller. But of course, the smaller the buckler is, the less useful it is as well. This, on the other hand, covers your entire arm, so you can use it like a buckler, you know, covering your sword hand in a number of ways. You can also use it independently. You know, basically, I look at this as enhanced single-handed sword fighting. That's how it felt while sparring. So you're focusing a lot on the sword and you will definitely still be parrying with the sword, but this gives you additional coverage and you're just able to close off more openings. I can close, let's say my upper, my upper left and my upper right. So I know that they're gonna have to strike low. So then I know that either it's going to be on my right side, so I'm gonna have to defend with the sword or it's gonna be on my left side and I'm gonna have to defend with the shield. Of course, if you're dealing with an experienced sword fighter, they're gonna throw in all kinds of misdirections and feints and shenanigans that make that a lot more difficult, but you have more options for defending yourself. And this is not terribly difficult to carry. Um, with a lot of things we can now come up with as, wow, wouldn't this be great in a one-on-one -on -one fight? The reason quite often that they didn't carry this is it's just hard to carry. Uh, I don't really see the problem here. You could absolutely hook this on your belt, be it you know upside down or whichever orientation you want. Uh, it's just going to you know, dangle from the belt, which your sword does too. So it's not really a big deal. It wouldn't be terribly quick to draw. That's uh, a drawback. Uh, I could imagine um, attaching it to your belt, perhaps like this, although I don't quite like that you then have the spike pointing at yourself, but the advantage of that would be you would be able to reach down, grab the handle, and then slip it over your arm, and now you can draw your sword. You could also potentially hook the grip of the shield over the handle of your sword, like that, and then you would be able to pull the shield with the right hand, and then slip through, and then draw the sword, which is pretty slow. If you're being jumped, that's not ideal. So that might be part of the reason a buckler is quicker to draw because all you gotta do is grab the handle. Now, arguably, you can do the same here. You don't absolutely have to strap it to your forearm. In an emergency, you can absolutely just grab the damn handle, right? You might be able to suspend the strap from either the sword hilt or a hook on the belt, perhaps, and then simply reach down and grab the handle like this, and you basically Basically good to go, like this. Like, it's not ideal, it's better if it's strapped to the arm, but you can still press it against the arm and it's absolutely usable like this. So in an emergency, that would work. I know what you're thinking when you're looking at this. Couldn't you dual wield two of those? Well, of course you can. You can do whatever you want. You can pick up a toaster and swing it like a flail and try to fight with that, but does it make sense? Well, this video is long enough as it is. Let's tackle that next time. So watch out for part two. When it's uploaded, I'm gonna link in the description below.